Hello people, this is my second video for the Q&A. So uh, let's start. Number one by Big Will Sun from Northern Ireland. Hey Antoine, my question is to do with leg training. My hands and calves don't respond anywhere as fast as my quads. How would you train to bring your hands and calves up? And how would you change your nutrition around it? Thanks for any feedback, Will M. Well, for the calves, I suggest maybe doing them twice a week. One super heavy training and one like super high rep, like reps of 50 or something like lighter, but lots of reps. And make sure you always use the biggest range of motion, like all the way down to all the way up. For the hamstrings, do them first in your leg workout before uh, your quads. That way you will have like full energy for your uh, hamstrings. Compared to that, if you do leg press, leg extension, lunges, and then you do hamstrings, you don't have enough energy to uh, do a, like a really good workout. And for your nutrition, uh, for any lagging body part, you should maybe eat more during that day, the day before, and also the day after. That way you um, have like all the calories you need to have like the best workout possible. Okay, number two by Murricane. What, in your opinion, were the best movements to bring up your shoulders? It's the side lateral, not the press, the side lateral. This, this is what gives like the nice shoulder cap but uh, you need to do them the right way because a lot of people when they do it they turn like that if you turn like that you cheat with your front delt so you won't get the side delt so what I do I do more like um, like an uh, upright robot like really wide like that that way you really get the side of the shoulder like Jay Cutler does them like that too like that all right number three by C. Coronato from the Dirty Jersey. Do you like to do anything else physical like tricking still? Or now that you are into bodybuilding, you tend to stay away from things like that because they are more prone to injury? Uh, I do tricks from time to time still, but nothing like crazy, because uh, especially near contests, because if I hurt myself, I might not be able to train um, as hard, or like let's say I mess up my knee and I cannot do squats. That would suck. Um, But I also do always do stretching at least three times a week, full body. Uh, I do plyo jumps too. My leg training, that's, that's what it is right now. It's uh, supersets like between squats and ju uh, box jumps. All right, question number four by KRS1890. I know you used to play hockey. So say I have uh, hockey practice five days a week. Is it a bad idea to work legs as well? Um, back when I was playing hockey, I didn't train. It was that I was really young. I played for eight years, but I was young. But um, one of the reason I stopped playing sports is because I wanted to train more for bodybuilding. Like I played football for a year. I was pretty good, but I stopped because I wanted to do a full-time bodybuilding. But because um, if you do legs like another day, that would be like uh, you're using your legs six days a week. That would be kind of overtraining. So you have to make a choice. Okay, number five by Linus Berlin. Did you enjoy the expo and will you come back next year? He's talking about the FIBO. Uh, yeah, yeah, it was uh, really cool. Uh, meeting a lot of great people and uh, I love Germany. So uh, it was very really different, I like it. So uh, I want to go back, it all depends uh, on the boss. <laughs> okay, number six by Aro by Eduardo. Antoine, which is the most effective exercise for growing big and massive lats? You have some tips for us to explode the muscle. Um, it's not really about which exercise, it's how you do them. Me in the past, I like, it was like way too much heavy weight. It's fun to do, but like if you do like, let's say a T-bar, like really heavy, you're more upright, you all use shoulders and traps. Do you understand? If we use lats, lose lighter weight, let's say on the pull down, and really like contract hard, contract for four seconds. It's the time under contraction that's really important. So. Um, Make sure you do that, try it out next time. Let's say, uh, instead of putting, putting the whole stack on a pull down, put like 165 and try to do 12 reps with a two second contraction at each time for four sets. You'll see it's way harder. All right, number seven by Porterhouse from Denver, Colorado. You said in your last video that you used to get fat in the off season. <laughs> But for the past two years, you have been keeping clean. So I have two questions for you related to that. One. How fat will you get in the off-season before your duty and now that you are eight clean? And he wants to know like my body fat percentage. 
I started this diet at 261 at uh, 10 and percent at uh, 15 weeks out. Uh, when I was really younger, I remember being 17, but I didn't really measure back then. But I was like, like it's, it's useless to be that fat. Part two of the question, in your opinion, have you been able to see the same amount of gains while staying clean? Or do you think it's more effective to allow yourself to get a little fatter in the off season? I think it's really useless to have excessive uh, fat in the off season because you'll have to lose it right away. Let's say you, you gain like 30 pounds in the off season and 20 pounds of that is fat and 10 of muscle. To lose that 20 pounds of fat, you might lose seven pounds of muscle. You understand? So, and me personally, most of my gains, my most quality muscle gains, I make them when dieting. It's probably because I'm stricter about the, uh, my training, my diet, my resting, my sleeping, everything like that. So me, it's always when I cut. So maybe next off season, I'll try to be the strictest possible, like dieting, and maybe I, I could compare. But uh, in the past, until now, it's always when I'm cutting, I make the most gains. All right, that's it for the second video of the Q&A. If you have any questions, log on to universalusa.com and find the thread and ask me the questions you want to ask me. <laughs>